Si en esa sala o cerca de ella continúa pasajeros con destino Leticia, Bolo Bianca 94, 86, nos encontramos finalizando el When I arrived at the airport, I knew I was going somewhere extraordinary. I was ready to disconnect myself from civilization and wrestle with the fears of land completely off limit to my knowledge and comfort. The trip took around two hours. When I landed, I was overcome with the extreme humid and hot temperature. It's probably at least 95 degrees. After a short taxi ride, I arrived to the town of Leticia, the main hub for those who live further within the density of the jungle. The town sits on the border of Colombia, Peru and Brazil. It's a bustling town abuzz with fleets of motorcycles and tuk-tuks. My trip could have been a typical touristic trip, only touching the sides of this eco bowl. But instead, I wanted immersion. I wanted to live and experience the Amazon from those most connected with it. When I finally arrived at the river to meet with my guide, I knew I will have to trust people I've never met with my life. And I knew I would leave with a lifetime of memories about a patch of the earth that's incomparable to anywhere else. We stocked the canoe with some vegetables and lots of fresh water. Although I was vaccinated for a long list of diseases prior to flying to the Amazon, I was told to avoid drinking the water in the forest, even if it's boiled. The Amazon River carries a lot of sediment, which gives it the muddy brown color. This water is full of life. The number of species of fish found here exceeds the number found in the entire Atlantic Ocean. And we are on the moon. The size of the Amazon rainforest is vast, being one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world, encompassing an area of over 2.5 million square miles across nine countries in South America. This untouched landscape, filled with half of the world's known species, and the fact so much of it remains completely uninhabited and unknown, is exactly what attracts the more curious who wants to peer in and try to understand it. It's cool enough. <laughs> After a couple of hours in the canoe, we arrived to a village on the Peruvian side. Um, welcome to Porta Alegria. El Peru. Where the pink dolphins roam the land, or roam the, the river. <laughs> Hola. Ah, perro. 
Taparrito. He's determined. The people here are very friendly and welcoming. They don't pay much attention to the concept of ownership. Everything here is shared. Farming and gathering food is everyone's responsibility. The most surprising fact I learned here is that the soil is infertile. Everything grows on top of a few inches of soil, with roots snaking along the surface, taking nutrients from whatever is decaying. We were invited for an early lunch by a funny guy who turns out to be the little boy's father. But hold on. Cinco la casa. Cinco esposa. Para two. <laughs> oh my goodness! You, you are local. <laughs> In the kitchen, they had some bananas, pans and pottery, and a charcoal stove. She's our chef. Yeah. Yeah. I watched as our host prepared some fish and other vegetables for our lunch. Bye. Muchas gracias. Ciao. 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 <laughs> as I was leaving, I kept thinking about the people who rely on the force for their survival. The force provides with endless generosity and abundance. The force gives and gives without questions or expectations. And people here live in absolute harmony. After an amazing time at the village, we headed back on the canoe, going deeper into the jungle. Long, endless water snaked through a massive green. Dense forests surrounded us. Trees pushed into the sky, and birds watching our every move. When we arrived at the edge of the forest, we walked for hours. Jet lag started to kick in. I was exhausted, but overly excited for this adventure. Inhaling the warm air was remarkably soothing and seemed to have the perfect blend of humidity. It was absolutely amazing. Everything looked different. I would say brighter, but that wasn't it. It was more like wearing a new kind of sunglasses with magnifying speakers. Soon, the ringing in my ears from the canoe motor gave way to an extraordinary silence with layers of buzzing bees, birds, monkeys, and who knows what else. Finally, we arrived to meet with my host family in a tucked away little house on a lake in the middle of the jungle. I was tired and confused as to what the hell I'm doing here. Why am I doing this? This question kept ringing in my head as I lay my body in the hammock. The idea of heading off to the middle of nowhere to sleep in hammocks nestled amongst biting ants, ravenous mosquitoes, and poisonous plants was a little daunting to say the least. By this point, I was more than a little concerned at how I was going to survive here. But I had to keep my cool. I can't give up now. I did the only thing that can calm me down, which is praying. A few minutes later, I was called to go fishing for our dinner in a lake full of caimans and piranha. Fishing in this lake was not an easy task. The piranha eats anything, but it likes to attack 
injured animals, especially birds who can't fly to safety. So I, I, I got a big one and it cut the whole line. It's unbelievable. After many unsuccessful attempts, we finally had to resort to the fishing net the family had planted along the lake. The fish was quickly cleaned while everything's being prepared for cooking. After that, I was properly introduced to the family. The food was amazingly delicious, like it was made by a top Manhattan chef. It's really delicious. After the food, I listened to the sad story about the disappearing animals because of illegal hunting. Yes, se miraba muchos aves, muchos animales, y ahora no se encuentra en este momento, lo están acabando. Los brasileros, puede ser los peruanos, porque acaban con todo. Nosotros, la parte colombiana, cuidamos las cosas aún todavía. Así que somos indígenas que dicen, no, los, los indígenas no trabajan, no, por nosotros cuidamos las cosas todavía. La parte colombiana, pero la parte peruana, acabaron con todo. La parte brasileña, acabaron con todo, totalmente. Es el momento que a veces nosotros, como indígenas colombianos, sufrimos. A ver que vamos al Perú, no hay nada. La parte colombiana va, ah, encuentra árboles de madera, encuentra muchas cosas todavía. La parte brasilera y peruana no hay nada. first night was terrifying to say the least. After hours of twisting and turning and trying to adjust to the sound of the jungle, I finally fell asleep. A couple of hours later, I woke up, besieged by the unknown side of the jungle that surrounded me. The darkness was still compact, the air fresh and wet. The forest was vibrating in an impromptu, though perfectly orchestrated concert that combined chirps, trills, and quivers, with moans, whispers, shrieks, and whimpers, echoing life in its forest, the inhaling of the trees, the exhaling of the wind, the silent presence of the river, and the sounds of raindrops hopping among the leaves, dripping toward the ground but never touching. This boisterous and intense vibration penetrated the body, the senses, the sleep, the very heart of the soul. And there, in this tiny core of my being, bliss was found, boundless and unfathomable, a reminder of how life can feel every day, if only allowed. The meditative moment was cut short by a doubting moan of unknown origin that traveled like a sonic snake among the tree trunks, remaining unnaturally long and tenuous. It occasionally seemed to whine as it went away only to return even more thundering and intimidating. It felt as if the beds of hell had opened, and the souls of the damned were taken over the surface of the earth. I got up and walked toward the edge of the room. I stretched my eyes to penetrate the darkness and focus intensely trying to decide where that sound was coming from. What could it be? I ruled out the possibility of mating or hunting animal, for the moans were too long and continuous to be coming out of just one beast.
the unearthly roar continued for a long while, rumping on the forest canopy and all, eps and tights. After an unforgettable horrific night, in the early morning, the mystery was solved. It was just a visiting troop of red howling monkeys. Every day we walk deeper into the jungle. Walking is the only way to navigate this area. There's no cars, no cell phones, no navigation. You have to completely trust your guide. Everything is always changing here. Colossal Brazilian nut trees, walking trees, parasites embracing trunks until they devour them completely. Leaf cutter ants, macaws, monkeys. It was life everywhere. Each day was a learning opportunity. It's like going back to school. The only difference, in here, you learn how to stay alive. Everything in here is watching you. The trees, the monkeys, the birds, the snakes. You absolutely have to pay attention to everything around you. La mayoría de este árbol tiene esta hormiga. Se llama tangarana. La tangarana, una picada de esta hormiga es como si te inyectaran una puntilla caliente. You can't really put words for the feelings that that you get, the vibes and and and, and how how you feel like everything here, although it's trying to kill you, but in the same times you feel that you know it's giving you also good vibes. Like according to him, he's saying that you know. Um, the jungle could like you or hate you so it really depends whether um, the jungle um, if the jungle likes you and you have good vibes the jungle will provide good vibes and if the jungle doesn't like you it will give you bad vibes uh, so you know let's see how the jungle like us or don't like us hopefully the jungle will like us because everything here is trying to kill you seriously The boa snake was trying to escape um, like that, which created the river Amazon. Um, and, and that's what they believe. It's, it's a lot of um, stories, um, you know, mythical stories that, that they tell you here. And it's amazing when you hear it from almost everybody here uh, that tells you the same story. In the jungle, you seem to never get tired of walking. You have to keep moving, like everything around you. And as the day is departing, another shift is getting ready to take over the jungle.
riding the canoe at night was a completely different experience. As we glided through the darkness on the large surface of the wavy water, the muddy liquid snake remained silent under our feet, lurking like an anaconda before the attack. The stars bestowed a glare on the jungle's canopy so faint that it barely reflects on the smooth waves of our passage. The beam from the flashlight kept piercing the thickness of the darkness, moving right and left like a finger searching for a reflection against a pair of eyes. Any eyes. That would add further mystery to my adventure. The night. This alluring siren and spellbinding clocks kept unfolding us. And nothing. Neither our thin disruptive beam nor our curiosity could help us resist the indistinct incantations. I was shaken off my reverie by a floodlight that emerged on our backs. I turned, dazed, and bewildered, only to see that the round sphere of the moon had finally managed to escape the entangled canopy and had launched into the sky like a ball set free after having been forcefully kept underwater. It looked at us from above with its smeared face, grimacing into a smile, and then dived into the river, battling graciously down the current. Unscathed by our presence, the small gods of the forest, who remained temporarily hidden in the trees, birds, and animals. Archetypal angels and demons of the Amazon tribes, who have been trading the jungle since time immoral, to keep, according to their legends, the sun from falling into the abyss. Our thoughts blended silently, and this, only this, was the way I was given permission to connect at the higher vibration of our humanity. This journey has imprinted an impression on my essence, meant to remain unplumished while traveling in the vortex of time. The gods of the jungle, the tribes, the river, and all the animal kingdom kept their secrets well. Still, in those moments of meditative anticipation, a tiny fissure opened, and a sacred union was performed, a merge of all presence into one. My heart echoed the heartbeat of the universe without rush, for there is no past or future. There is only now. There is only eternity. <laughs>